it's time for our next session. Uh, and it's my pleasure to welcome uh, my colleagues, Melissa Becker and Mike Piller from the University Library. Welcome. Thank you. Um, I think we'll go ahead and share our screen. Okay, is everyone seeing that all right? Yes, thank you. Okay. Well, um, welcome to American University, everyone, from the library. Uh, my name is Melissa Becker. I'm Associate Director of Research, Teaching, and Learning at the library, and I'm here with my colleague, Mike. Do you want to introduce yourself? Sure. Good morning, everybody. Welcome. Uh, my name is Mike Piller. I'm the Senior Director of Academic Technology in the library. Okay, we're going to take you on a whirlwind tour today of services and collections that new faculty will be interested in. Um, we have a list of links that I thought I would try putting in the chat. Let's see if that works. Ah, yes, there we go. Um, so as we go along, if there's something that strikes your fancy and you wanna follow a link and bookmark it, you know, they're there for you. Um, so uh, let's start. And how can I, there we go. Okay, so I think the first thing that you need to know is that the library is filled with people that want to help you and make your instruction and research a success. I think the first people to get to know are your subject librarians. We do have a subject librarian that is um, an expert in all of the curricular areas of AU. Um, these people can uh, introduce your students to resources that they'll need to do their assignments. Um, they can also purchase materials um, on your behalf for your instruction or research, and they can provide research assistance both to you and your students. So it's good to get to know them. You may already have gotten an email from your subject librarian. The next thing to know is that the AU library has various uh, spaces and buildings and, and um, relationships and networks uh, in the Washington DC area. The main library of course is on campus anchoring down one end of the quad, but we do have a music library in the Cats and Arts Center that has musical CDs and scores. We also have a very active archives and special collections in the Spring Valley building. We have some really interesting things and in special collections. One thing of general interest is maybe our Peace Corps archive, which has communications and letters um, from uh, volunteers, Peace Corps volunteers who um, from all over the world. We also have a, an archivist named Leslie Nellis who can help faculty figure out how to introduce special collections into their courses. Also, we are a member of the Washington Research Library Consortium, um, eight member libraries in the DC area we share a catalog and we also share materials back and forth. So we can get anything that you want from a consortium library, usually within 48 hours. The next part of my presentation is kind of divided into teaching support and research support. So let's talk a little bit about teaching support. Um, and I'll first talk about reserves and music and media. Um, we do have course reserves available. Uh, this is their busy time of year. So um, if you look in your Canvas course and you see a button for course reserves, go ahead and click on that and submit whatever you want to have on reserve for your students this year. Um, we prioritize electronic um, uh, online versions of, of textbooks uh, for students. Um, the music library I've, I've talked about briefly, we have uh, not only the CDs and the physical materials, but streaming audio, um, sheet music, other materials available for your coursework. And we have visual media as well, both physical DVDs and streaming video that can be linked to your Canvas course reserves. In terms of other teaching support, we have information literacy instruction. Um, you can invite your librarian to come speak to your class to introduce resources and also information literacy concepts. Um, we have um, online information literacy concept modules available in this great database called Credo. Um, these modules can be easily placed into your Canvas course. 
Um, and also, um, we would ask you to um, let us help students who are struggling with research. Uh, we have general appointments. Um, we have subject specialist appointments. Uh, and we also provide research support 24 seven through chat. So um, if you find that students are, are having a difficult time, please feel free to send us or send them to us. Um, we also have a technology borrowing service department that um, has a lot of things that you can check out as faculty um, to support your instruction. Um, some examples include webcams, headphones, microphones, tripods. We also have cables of various kinds to connect to projectors. And uh, we do have laptops for adjuncts who don't um, have one for teaching. These are requested through your department. In terms of other things, we do have some special things um, for students who are doing um, interesting multimodal assignments. We have a poster printer that uh, students can use that, that would be great if you're doing um, some kind of a, a mock conference or other um, presentation involving a, a graphical poster. We also have 3D printer available for students and a, a fully stocked makerspace that has other things like a sewing machine and even yarn. Um, we also have a, the borrowing um, of the AV, the, the webcams and things are available to students as well as faculty. Uh, we have a simple studio that makes it very easy to make a professional quality video just with the touch of a button. And we have a Mac lab in Anderson that has a, a variety of multimedia editing software. This is just to give you a heads up about our research awards. You'll hear more about these over the year. In the spring, we give awards to students for papers. We give one uh, for the best undergraduate paper. We give one for the best writing studies paper. And we also have the Bowles Award that is for a project related to poverty. So, you know, as you're looking at assignments and grading papers, looking at papers this year, keep this in mind. If they're really good papers, um, you know, later on, you can encourage your student to apply for these awards. They can win up to $1,000. And there's a really nice ceremony at the end of the year that recognizes them. So just to keep this in mind. Let's turn to research support now. Of course, we have library materials available through our website. We have millions of books um, accessible through AU Collection and the Consortium Collection. We have 600, more than 600 databases. Uh, we have an interlibrary loan service that can get you anything you need from within or outside of the consortium. Uh, faculty have unlimited checkout of materials with three fixed due dates during the year corresponding to the ends of the semester. So you can keep things out for a long period of time. You can also designate somebody to be a proxy borrower for you. Um, that link to the form um, for to designate a proxy is available in the links that I sent you. Um, so you can have students come and check out materials on your behalf. And also you can request that the library purchase materials for your research and for your instruction as well. In terms of research services, we have of course our Ask a Librarian page that gives you access to your subject librarian for appointments and also to our research chat. Uh, we have uh, geospatial research services, including a GIS lab and a program coordinator who can consult with faculty about um, uh, mapping and about GIS data. We also have a number of data services for you. We have a data librarian um, who can uh, purchase data sets on behalf of faculty and um, provide information about how to share them and archive them, and even um, help you review data management plans if you're applying for a grant. Many grants now you know, want you to have a data management plan. Um, and we also have an institutional repository called ARA that can be a repository, a repository for data and for projects and papers. As well, um, if you are, um, having one, your project accessible online, we have librarians who can help you with metadata creation so that those can be easily discovered and found by users. 
Here's just a list of some of the research support tools and methods that we have available. A LinkedIn Learning, I think many people have heard about. It's a database that has video tutorials for many software platforms. Um, we can put you, um, get you in touch with research networks where you can share your, your research. Uh, Tropy and Omeka and WordPress are available for image storage. And also with Omeka and WordPress, you can create um, exhibits from your research to make them more visible to the public. Uh, you can also borrow um, our equipment, as I've mentioned. There's a simple studio. We have the multimedia editing tools. And um, we're, we're getting, uh, we're just with baby steps with the text mining, but we do have the Happy Trust that has text mining available. And we can um, uh, tell you about other things that are available through vendors if you're interested in text mining. And finally, uh, we have services to help you um, with your publishing and their scholarly impact. We have a communications, a scholarly communications librarian named Rachel Borchart who can provide consultation for many of the things listed on this slide. We do have, I wanna highlight our open access fund, which can help you pay for the open access article fees um, to publish in open access journals. We did that specifically to encourage faculty to publish more in open access journals. We have the Institutional Repository, ARA, that I've mentioned. Um, we can also uh, consult on copyright and fair use and tell you ways to measure the impact of your research. Um, we also can provide um, help with getting an ORCID. An ORCID ID, an open researcher and contributor identifier is assigned to you. It's a unique ID that helps match you with research, your research, so that uh, people can find your research more easily. The same for um, digital object identifier, minting um, can um, help you get um, a unique identifier assigned to your project or your publication so that it can be found more easily. So um, that, was, that was a lot of information. We just want you to know that the people in the library are ready to support you and help you with whatever you might need. And I'm gonna turn that over to Mike now. Thank you, Melissa. Do you mind advancing the slides for me as we go? Not through? at all, not at all. Okay, thanks. So um, again, welcome everybody. Uh, very excited to have the opportunity to talk to all of our new faculty. It's always a wonderful time of year and welcoming everybody in. Um, so I'd like to talk about my team at AU. It's our, the academic technology team. Um, Think of us as the, the IT shop um, for, for your teaching. Um, many times a group like mine is within the IT department at, at universities. Sometimes it's in the library, sometimes it's in other places, but we very uh, purposefully put my group um, in the library so it would be within academic affairs. And um, so we have you know, greater uh, relationships with you. That's, yeah, that's the plan anyway. Um, and so it, everything that do, what I'll talk about will be related to the, the tools and technology tools that are available to you for teaching. So we'll go to the next one. So uh, our you know, the biggest thing is probably Canvas. Um, Canvas is our learning management system. Um, you have hopefully uh, logged into Canvas and you've been able to kind of look around in there. Um, that's part of what we do. If you go to the homepage right now, your dashboard, you'll see a large um, announcement relating to all the different um, workshops we're doing uh, upcoming, and those will keep going on throughout the year, and we'll continually put different um, announcements up there for, for uh, workshops that are available to you. Um, and everything that, that plugs into um, yeah, we're doing some, some Canvas overview sessions this week. Um, everything that plugs into Canvas. So turn it in, probably heard of um, Zoom. We're using it right now. Um, that lock on the right side is for a, a lockdown browser that, that you can use for exams. And Kaltura is our uh, video content management system. So um, you have um, from, from Canvas, you can uh, launch Kaltura to make videos, you can have your students make videos, et cetera, et cetera. So 
Um, there'll be workshops on Kaltura um, throughout, and uh, you can always contact us for, for help. The three links, um, well, two links and a phone number. Um, I wanted to try and keep it simple for you as far as who to contact. If you email canvas at american.edu, it will, it will cover everything. Um, it'll it'll go to my team, and from there we can kind of you know move it around to whoever needs it. The thirty nine zero four number is the direct line to the Canvas help um, from our team. There's also twenty four seven Canvas help on the Canvas uh, interface itself. If you go down to the left side of the of the Canvas window, there's a there's that constant blue bar on the left, the navigation bar, and on the bottom there is a um, a help section. Um, and you can chat online, and there's some phone numbers there online too. So you can; those are uh, stats by a Canvas, and you can always reach out to us as well. Um, so if you have a general Canvas question about how does this work, how does that work, you can always go there, um, or you can go to us. But more specific about AU is like, why am I not in this course? Who's my instructor? Can I add a TA? Those, those types of things, um, the Canvas team won't be able to help with you because they are, um, you know, those are specific American. Uh, questions. So uh, we, we will field those for you. And if it hasn't uh, brought up yet, the help.american.edu is a, is a great site that's managed um, uh, by OIT for the entire campus. So there will be sections for faculty, sections for students, et cetera. But the, um, the LSS stands for Learning Support Systems. Um, so if you go there, there'll be a faculty section, and then you'll see all kinds of things that are um, <clears throat> that are help knowledge articles on um, specific things for for faculty. Okay, we can go to the next one. We also have um, virtual computing and and laboratories that we maintain on campus. If if you need a computer lab, um, those are in the Anderson lab. Um, Alyssa uh, mentioned that for a minute. Uh, we we maintain those labs. There's a number of them. There's one in the SPA building, um, and then we have the the Mac lab as well and the GIS lab that, that Melissa um, mentioned. There is also a, a virtual uh, laboratory available to you. So there's virtual apps and virtual desktop. Um, these are widely used uh, across the campus. And um, what, what that is, it's, it's a streaming solution to you. So for, for um, uh, software like uh, R or SBSS or SAS or Stata, um, and, and, and a host of others, you can use those virtually. And there's, there's, some, there's some help links on there, some direct links. Uh, but basically, those are streaming apps um, where it'll launch just like on your computer. Um, but you, know, you don't have to go through the download and everything and licensing. That's all taken care of on our site. Um, next slide, please. This is obviously a big one. You'll be teaching somewhere. Um, and those somewheres will be in classes, and that's also my team. So all the AV and classroom technology um, is is uh, my group. That is a different email address. It's just AV at American, and it's a different phone number, 2296. Uh, we have um, uh, we have personnel, uh, especially the designated for Spring Valley. So if you're teaching down there, there is a Spring Valley team. Um, and the rest of the AV is covered by our main campus team. So it's a you know it's a fairly large team. We'll go out and, and help you if you need any assistance. Um, if you're interested in using the you know the Zoom uh, functionalities in the room, um, you know you can just give us a call. Uh, if you, it's, it's pretty self-explanatory once you get in there. But um, any any problems at all, any questions, uh, the number is is twenty two ninety six, and I uh, can reach out to AV at American. Next slide, please. I don't want to put Anna behind. Uh, Melissa uh, discussed the, the Simple Studio. This is it in practice. Um, that young man there is Ben Choi. He's our uh, main uh, uh, video personnel. Uh, he'll be helping you in filming, and he's using what's called a light board right there that you can you can write on. And when it films, it switches it, so it's it looks like it's backwards, but um, when we run the, the film, it's actually um, you know forward. So if you if you want to film any uh, lectures uh, for whatever reason, you can come in here, and um, there's a direct link to the uh, scheduling um, site that we have there. 
Next slide. And we, we have a lot of other off um, kind of uh, boutique things. So MathWorks, Abby, Esri, WordPress, as, as Melissa mentioned. Um, so we'll take care of all of these as well. So if you find some software that you'd like to use in your class and you need it, um, either it's its own installation or you need it plugged in with Canvas or anything like that, again, just you know, reach out to Canvas at American. Um, the paper cut, you know, as we do campus printing. I don't know why that happened, but um, we do it. And so if any printing issues, you can always reach out to us as well. Um, next slide. And that's it. Um, these are the three links I think that are most important to remember. Um, Canvas, AV, and then that, um, you know, the help site for um, any knowledge articles that you have questions about. So, Mike, uh, we are uh, at time, but I see a yep. question in the chat. Uh, if you have a minute to, to answer that question in writing, that would be great. Um, sure. And then we're going to move on to the next session. Melissa and Mike, thank you so much for being here. Absolutely. Uh, thank thank you. you very much. It's